What's going on guys? So I'm prepping this uh, competition E36 for the season. So got a bunch of stuff off, going through a bunch of things, you know, some stuff's getting fixed, some stuff's getting modified. So one of the things I'm doing right now is draining the uh, quick change diff and I'm changing the gearing for the first track that we're doing. Um, so just maintenance things, it's good to just do a full flush and you'll uh, fluid in it so um, I've already got it mainly drained these take about I think four or four and a half quarts so a lot of fluid but it's it's nice to change it especially since this was brand new and this is the first flush so it's good to do ahead of the season so yeah I figured you know while I have it drained I will do a quick video to really dig into these. Um, you know, I'm sure you've seen them if you're into race cars, if you've seen them in drift cars and circle drift track and many other things. So the advantages of these are uh, they're stronger, they hold more fluid, so cooling wise, they can stay cooler. And the biggest reason why people use them is you can change your gearing in about a couple of minutes. I'm sure you've heard about it, or if you haven't, this is what race cars use. Uh, if you've heard about them or seen them, everybody talks about a quick change, blah, blah, blah. Since I'm going to have this thing apart, kind of, I'm going to show you guys how a quick change really works. You know, I just figured it will be a cool thing to share. So, yeah, I've got it drained. I'm going to take the um, front cover off and drain. There's usually about a half a quart that gets into these gears, so behind this cover. And, uh, yeah, this is... Pretty much how simple it is to change gearing. You've got some of them are 10. This is six 15 mil mix. So snug. Alright, so you'll have your cover, it's got two sets of roller bearings in there, and uh, these two shafts will go in these bearings, they support them, so this is pretty much what the cover is. So inside you've got your bottom gear and your top gear, what's going on here is this, so the drag shaft goes here, this is your flange. And then you got the main shaft that goes through and then that's pretty much this bottom shaft that's going through the bottom here and that's this guy so this shaft's pretty much connected to your drive shaft from the transmission and then that's the power coming in it's transferred via this gear to the top gear and then this shaft is what actually goes into the differential itself where on a regular diff the shaft would be in the center and it would come from the drive shaft spins and then it spins the ring gear on the inside and all that stuff on a conventional one so on this one what you got going on is you got a shaft coming in on the bottom just transferred via this gear to the top one and then this is pretty much on the conventional diff this would be the input shaft so the reason why they do that is so you can have these set of gears and this is where all the magic happens think about this bottom shaft that's coming from the transmission and the drive shaft as like on a bicycle where your pedals are and you're pedaling and if you've ever had like a bicycle that's got adjustable gears the bigger you go on the gear where your pedals are, the ratio becomes lower. And that means it turns 
the rear wheel faster. And then the same thing for, the, let's say, the rear wheel. If you go to the smaller gear on the rear where, the, let's say, your bicycle wheel is, um, if you go smaller, then you turn the wheel faster. If you go bigger, you turn the wheel slower. So when you're going up a hill, you go to the bigger gear, and that gives you much higher gear ratio and makes it easier to go up and it, you know you're able to apply more torque to the rear uh, tire so yeah that's kind of how I like to look at it as this is the front gear on the bicycle where your pedals are and then this is the rear gear where the wheel is on the bicycle so the way this works is if you go small gear on the bottom big gear on top that means it's a high gear ratio and that means your wheel speed is going to be slower um, because this has to turn more than the top one um, so let's say it's you know one to one so these gears would be exactly the same size once you go let's say half the size on this one it would make it 1.5 so this has to turn one and a half times for this one to turn one full time. So, yeah, uh, it's a little complicated when you explain it, but it's actually a lot simpler. Uh, what's going on here is very simple. So, you're able to get these sets in many different gear ratios from like the low twos all the way to the high like sixes. So, yeah, you just select the gear set, and also what you can do. So like right now I'm running a 460 gear ratio because the small gear is on the bottom and the big gear is on top. So each gear set gives you two ratios. So this is a 460 and if I take this top gear and put it here and then this bottom gear and put it here, it becomes a 37. So you can swap so at each set you can get two ratios. Uh, so this is kind of how you go about it. So if you have let's say Five to six gear sets, which is each set is two gears. You end up having 12 ratios Because each gear set gives you two gear ratios uh, So right now I'm 450 or 460 and then if I flip them I go to 370 um, Also, it's it it's different from each quick change some quick changes uh the base ratio is different uh, so that's also something you have to pay attention to this one is I believe is a 412 base so you just go off of that base number and when you select your gearing you go by the chart um, but yeah to change the gears it's pretty simple um, if you want to change the gearing and you're using the same um, gear set you just Take this guy off, put it up top, take this one, put it on the bottom, you just pretty much swap. If you're going to a completely different gear ratio from this set, then you take these out and then put the new ones in. So I'm going to go to a different gear ratio right now. So I'm going to take these out, clean them, and set them aside, and then uh, I'll put the new gear ratio in. These are straight cut gears, and it's hardened, so what makes them a lot stronger so yeah so I had 27 or this is 29 tooth and this is 26 tooth uh, so the, the smaller on the bottom bigger on the top if I were to switch the 29 on the bottom and the 26 on the top it would spin the small gear a lot faster therefore giving you more wheel speed so I decided I am going to stick with these gears but I'm going to just flip them so I have 29 on top and 26 on the bottom for a 450 and now I'm going to a 29 on the bottom 
26 on top for a gear ratio of 370. So now that this gear is a lot bigger, it turns the smaller gear a lot faster. So, so with my gearing and my transmission, because all that stuff uh, matters, so depending on your gearing and your transmission, but with my gearing, um, just to kind of make this a little bit simpler, uh, with having the big one on top, big gear on the top, small gear on the bottom, I was at a 459 gear ratio, 460, whatever, and uh, in third gear, that would be 91 miles an hour, and that's taken also into consideration my uh, wheel and uh, tire size. So now that I switch the 29 tooth to the bottom and the 29, uh, 26 tooth to the top, my gear ratio is now uh, 370. So instead of 91 miles an hour in third gear, I will have 113 miles an hour. So about 22 mile an hour uh, faster. Um, usually teams are changing, you know, three to four mile an hour. Um, I'm making a big change because, you know, I'm going from a small track to a bigger track. So um, I'm going to need all the gear. Um, you're also able to like, play with it. You know, if you want to run third gear at the track, or if you want to run fourth gear, and you can kind of fine tune it there. You know, you can have 113, uh, you can have 106 in third, or if you want to run fourth, then you go really short, and you go 133. So, yeah, there's a lot of ways to go about it. Um, teams really rely on this. It's probably one of the most important parts of a race car. Um, but yeah, they handle, they can handle 1,000 horsepower, the heavier set ones like I have here. They can go up to 1,400, whatever. I don't really believe whatever companies say, things always break, but they're definitely a lot stronger than regular uh, differentials. This being, you know, straight cut gears, they can handle a lot more and you can have the ability to change your gearing within five minutes so yeah a lot of teams in formula drift or any other race car um will have some type of adjustable diff it doesn't necessarily need to be the same style but uh pretty much I, my opinion every race car uh, should have one and they do i hope you uh guys learned something from this i thought it would be a fun little quick video to shoot and talk about it uh, you know I always see people discussing quick change oh this car has a quick change or I'm getting a quick change or you know I'm changing my gear to this or whatever and, um, I don't see a lot of videos people explaining kind of how they work so um, yeah they're just as simple as when you have the different gears on a bicycle so um, just a little bit stronger <laughs> and uh yeah hope you guys uh learned something enjoyed it um let me know what you guys think in the comments uh and uh yeah stay tuned more stuff on this car as we get closer to the season and the uh, pro-am series so see you guys in the next one